Hello there and welcome back to the Showing Up to Life podcast and YouTube channel. My name is Art Burns. I'm really, really happy to be here with you today. I am excited. I would say that I'm excited, but there's also something in me that's, I don't know. I don't want to say it's it's the anti-excitement or anything like that, but it's it's something that's uncomfortable perhaps, right? In the past, I might have called this something bad. I was feeling bad about something, but that's not what I'm ready to say here. I'm, I'm, I'm more thinking that it's just uncomfortable. And you know what? Being uncomfortable is okay. That's the important thing to remember, right? And, and being uncomfortable and accepting that I'm, I'm uncomfortable, what that allows me to do now is to inquire as to my discomfort. What's making me uncomfortable? What specifically is going on? Right? Because we use a blanket statement like, I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> what does that mean? If I, if I allow myself to, you know, again, if I, if I just say that, oh, no, I'm feeling bad. Let me get some water. Let me get some tea. Let me get, uh, you know, something to eat. Let me just, you know, work it through. Well, then I don't ask any questions about it. Right? But if instead I sit and I say, it's okay to feel uncomfortable. Let me invite my discomfort in. Come here, sit down, sit down, come here, right next to me. Come on, sit down, have a cup of tea with me. Talk to me. What's going on with you? What are you really? I want to get to know you. I want to understand you. I want to be curious about you. And as I'm doing that, I realize that, well, you know what? I went ice skating a little while ago. Uh, my children have, have reignited my passion for ice skating. I used to play a lot of ice hockey, and I love ice skating. I just love being out there and feeling the, the, the edges of my blades go into that ice and just uh, flying down the rink and switching directions and just love it. <clears throat> so I got a little bit sweaty, <laughs> you know, so I'm feeling a little uncomfortable because of that. My skin feels a little, you know, like a little itchy, perhaps a little, um, you know, dry, maybe, you know, I, I feel I'm maybe not as well rested as I should have been or as I could be, um, because I just didn't get to sleep that much last night. I was up very late because I was so excited working on my workshop that's coming up on Saturday. See, my discomfort does not in any way impede my enthusiasm. And that's because I'm allowing the discomfort. I'm allowing it to be. Something else that's made me uncomfortable uh, mentally and emotionally is, um, <laughs> is that I've been in a little bit of a, uh, a kerfuffle <laughs> on uh, Facebook uh, regarding this whole Neil Young, Joe Rogan whole thing, right? I'm not here to tell you any opinions or anything like that, but I just want to say that I am, um, I am always anti-censorship, always. And if that costs me some listeners, I mean, I, I hope it doesn't. I hope that you stick around. Um, and I'm not saying that I advocate anything. I, I don't listen to Joe Rogan. I don't advocate for him or anything like that. Um, but I think Neil Young is wrong in this situation. I don't think that we should be. And there's also a lot about Neil Young that you might not know about what he's doing behind the scenes. And he sold half his music library to a company that was associated with the uh, the housing crisis and the um, the deforestation of the Amazon rainforest. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of other stuff. So, you know, the, the point is that there's always more than meets the eye, Right. And that's the whole point of mindfulness, too, is to look deeper, right? And so in the last couple of days, I've had like simultaneously like four different debates going on, you know? And I must say, though, that, that in most of the debates, um, I've been told that it's, been, it's refreshing to be able to have a debate without it descending into an emotional mudslinging, <clears throat> you know? So that's good, right? That, that's a positive attribute to what's happened in the last few days because that's what we need, right? We need to be able to listen to each other. Right. And, and in this process, I've been practicing kindness. I've been practicing loving kindness. Right. What is loving kindness? Loving kindness is about, you know, it's about connecting more deeply to, to myself and to the world and to everybody in it. To connect deeply in the sense of having a caring for everyone. And, and, and really wishing for them to be happy and to be fulfilled in their lives. 
Even if they're doing something that seems mean or wrong or, 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 you know, saying something mean to me on Facebook, I still wish for you to be well. I still want you to be happy. I want you to be healthy. I want you to feel loved. I want you to be able to forgive people because forgiveness is good for you. And so, and so these last couple of days have been, you know, especially like last night was particularly, I, I just, you know, again, I was up late, I was working on my project and then I went on Facebook for a minute and like an hour later found myself again having like four different debates with four different people and it was just exhausting and really, really, um, it was painful. I'll be honest with you, it was downright painful. When I got off there, I got a headache. I was like, wow, that was hard. And you know what? It's okay. Right? It's okay to feel uncomfortable. It's okay. Because it's impermanent, right? This discomfort is impermanent. In fact, I mean, an hour ago, I felt great skating around the ice. Although the, the girl who sharpened my skates, she didn't do such a great job. It was my skates were still very dull. But this also, <clears throat> it's okay that my skates are dull today. Right? I, I managed. It wasn't as awesome as it could have been. It would have been nicer. And now in that moment, I have choice, right? I have a choice to go to that counter where that girl's sitting. Um, the girl's maybe about, I don't know, 25 years old, maybe not even, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> which is half my age, less than half my age, right? <laughs> Truly, I'm in the range where I could start being these kids' grandfather, right? Like that's where it's starting to get to. That's, that's a new territory for me. But, but it's true, right? Like that's it's a young kid here, right? And... I, you know, so I have a choice. I could slam my skates down on the, on the counter and say, I'm not paying for these. So you got to do these over. And I could, you know, become indignant and I could become angry and I could say that it's not right. You took my money and blah, 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 blah. And you know what? Most of that would be right. It would not be wrong. It would not be inaccurate to say that kind of stuff. Is it necessary though? Like what, what comes of that? What comes of that, 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 sort of treatment of somebody. <clears throat> My skates are still, still dull, and now I'm in the uncomfortable position. I've been here before, in the uncomfortable position of now, oh, now this person that I yelled at is who I have to count on to do my skates over. So do I really expect much better? Is it fair to expect that? You know, going back to our expectations, right? And that's the problem right? That somehow I expected that this girl was going to do some kind of perfect job on my skates. And when they weren't perfect, and you can't really tell until you get out on the ice, you know, and when they weren't perfect, you know, that's my choice, right? That's where the decision gets made. Not when I'm talking to the girl five minutes later or whatever. It's, it's in that moment that I realize that the skates are dull. That's my opportunity right there, right in that moment, in that instant is when I decide how I want to experience that. I could choose to resist it. And if I resist it, I become angry. I become resentful. I become hateful. I become loud and, and, and weaponizing my words and my tone, my body language to some 22-year-old kid right? Or my other chance, my other choice, pardon me, is I could accept it. I could accept it. And, and you know what? We got to, and we always, 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 part of this is to take it all in, right? You got to see the totality of the moment as well, right? And in, in the totality of this moment, I can recognize that the girl didn't even charge me. <laughs> she charged me for the skate sharpening, but she said, okay, you can go skate on them. I'll, you know, I'll just charge you for the, 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 the sharpening. So I'm not even paying for this. Like, like so, <laughs> right? So that has to be kind of taken into account. So, you know, if it costs me a hundred dollars to skate for the hour and, and it's a, uh, a, you know, an uncomfortable skate, well then that's something that maybe I take a different action, but I could still accept it first, right? When I accept that this is the reality, <sighs> that gives me a moment to take a deep breath and to decide what I want to do next. Not automatically plop my skates down and start yelling, but, but, but take a moment, 
you know, feel some space in between this experience and what I'm going to, how I'm going to respond to it. And and take stock in what that response looks like. What's it going to, you know, empathically, you know, put myself in everybody's position, whoever's involved with this. In this case, it's just the one, this girl, right? And so I went over, I, I skated, I got a good sweat on. I was out there for almost an hour. I was like, oh, thank you so much for your help. And And she like looked at me and I was like, I was like, I want them to be good. <laughs> I really do. You know, I, I'm sorry, but it's just, I feel like it's just really not much different from what I had yesterday. I'm so sorry. I don't know what to say. I said, are you the one? And she's like, well, I did them today, but I'll have my coworker do them tomorrow. And maybe they'll be better. I said, I don't want it to be about that. You can try again. I'm okay with it. It's not, I'm not angry or anything. But, but I really, you know, I'm used to like, I really need to, you know, I like to skate aggressively. You know, I really want a, a good edge on there. And I even said, and this is part of, part of what comes out of this, right? I even said the word specifically. I said, well, maybe I'm asking for the wrong thing. Can you help me? Maybe I'm doing something wrong here, right? Think about how she felt there, right? It, she's sitting there, you're just, big 50 some year old guy and long hair and he's all sweaty and huffing and puffing. And, you know, I don't know what she's feeling about me and, you know, but, but it could be very intimidating. Right. <laughs> and, and so here she is. And, and if I say, you know, somebody screwed up my skates, <laughs> what does that feel like? Right. That feels like, Oh God, I'm in trouble. Oh, oh, I want to get out of here. Help me. But if I say, Hey, maybe am I doing something wrong here? Is there some way that I can help to, to make this go better? Because I don't want to waste everybody's time either. I don't mind paying again. Right? Saying those words, it's like, okay, okay. Ah, now she feels a little bit like, okay, we can, we can now connect to each other. You see? And that's exactly what happened. I said, hey, by the way, what's your name? She says, oh, my name's Stephanie. I said, oh, Stephanie, it's really nice to meet you. I, I, I really don't want to be in this tension or anything, but just please, it's, it's no big deal. I mean, you know, I'd love for you to try it again. And she's like, no, I'll just have him do it tomorrow. He's, you know, he's more experienced and it's okay. I said, all right, but I don't want it to be about that. You know, I'm, I'm cool. Like, I'm not trying to say you did a bad job. I think I just didn't ask for the right thing. I said, you know, what should I ask for? Is it three eighths instead of five eighths, you know? And that's a connection now that we have, right? And so now I drive away from that, right? And I feel good in my heart. I feel healthy. I feel happy. I feel warmth. I feel regulation. I feel all that Facebook stuff <laughs> just going away, right? Versus the other way, as I've told you before, <laughs> oh my gosh, do you remember the story I told you about the kid in the pet store? <laughs> Look, for all of you who didn't hear that before, um, I was in a pet store in, in the height of my, when I was 100 pounds heavier than I am now, and blood pressure raging up around 200, and you know, 200 over like one something, it was really, really scary, my health. And I was a, just a ball of rage all the time. And I was standing there online and this kid, it was just so slow and nobody helping the kid out. And, and I finally, you know, the lady before me with all like six people standing online, the kid's like, oh, do you want to fill out a, 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 me a membership card application? It'll save 10%. <laughs> I know that's his job and I'm making fun. I don't mean to do that with his voice. I just, you know, it's like, you know, teenage goofy voice, you know, I'm just saying it out of love. I'm not angry about the kid anymore. But the thing was at the moment, I was like, you got to be effing kidding me. Are you really going to do this with my time? And I walked up to that kid and I called him a word. Um, it's two words um, that rhymes with goose rag <laughs> oh my gosh i can't i still can't believe that i said that to that kid right and so the point that i'm making now though is when i when i said that and i did that and again i felt completely justified in the moment that's the thing that anger does to us right anger makes us feel like saying that horrible term to somebody is actually 
in any way, like not only just acceptable, but perfectly appropriate, <laughs> right? That's the way anger makes you feel, right? In the moment. But then five, 10, 15 minutes later, when the anger is subsiding, a half hour, two hours, tomorrow, whatever it is, what is left in, in that, that memory of calling that kid, that 17, 18 year old kid, that horrible, horrible word? It's nothing but shame, nothing but shame and guilt and, and just, just self hatred at that point, <laughs> which then is a whole nother thing that I have to deal with. That's a whole other set of dysregulation that could go on for another couple of days. And during this time, as I always say, life is going to reach out to me. Life is going to reach out to me in the, ter in the form of my business, in the form of my family, in the form of my friends, my loved ones, my romantic interests of old. <laughs> I've been married almost 20 years now, so there's <laughs> no more romantic interests. <laughs> there's love. There's lots of love, just, you know, not that kind of thing. But anyway, um, so the idea, though, is that, is that with Stephanie today, right? Not only is it not a liability in terms of my own stress and not being able to show up for my life and stuff like that. But the other thing is that, that feeling an abundance of that, you know, the stress that's brought on by those negative emotions, right? That's really unhealthy for my body, right? Like that is dangerous for me. Dangerous for you too. It makes us sick. And so, <clears throat> And so if we look at what just happened with Stephanie, when I went and I said, hey, let me really infuse kindness into this situation, even though I'm a little pissed off. And I was. I certainly was. I was a little like, oh, come on, because this was the second time they're doing the skates, right? She had already done them once. And then I and then I skated on them and I went back to her. I was like, I'm sorry, I, they're not really sharp enough, like not even close. Like really, I want like the next size. Like go for it, you know. And again, they <laughs> did like a little tickle, and it wasn't so. So I have every right to be resentful. And there's part of me that says like, well, let me just take them somewhere else, right? Like you know. But that too is like, I don't want to hurt the people's feelings. Like, like I want to make kindness part of this whole thing, no matter what. So I kind of feel like it's, it's, you know, why not give her another shot? You know, after the third time, you know, maybe then it's, it's a compassionate way of saying, Hey, look, you know, maybe it's the way that you've been trained or, or maybe it's the way the coworker does it. Maybe it's your machine is not, you know, I don't know, but you know, I've gotten my skates sharpened before and it's, you know, totally different. From this. I'm going to go somewhere else and I'm going to bring my skates back and show you what they're like. All right. But I'm still going to come back because you guys are great over here. You know, that kind of thing. Right. Again, that's the way to say, Hey, you stink and I'm really dissatisfied. And I'm taking my business elsewhere. <laughs> Same message. But feel the difference, right? Because again, getting back to my point, this belabored point that I keep sidetracking from, is that I walked away from that experience with Stephanie today. And I dare say, I believe she walked away from that or sat there while I walked away from the experience. But, but coming out of that experience, she too, you know, we both benefited from that connection. Barbara Friedrichson talks about this in a TED talk I think I shared with all of you uh, in one of my uh, emails that, you know, that, that, you know, when we're connected with one another, right, our, our vagus nerves are, are, you know, responding to one another, right? Like our nerves are talking to each other and they're regulating themselves and they're, you know, it's not just, you know, it's the, the heartbeat becomes synced up. The breathing becomes synced up. The neurons in our brain become synced up. This is really important stuff and really healthy for us. For a long time, we've known that if we're, if we're talking to somebody, our gestures will start mimicking each other and mirroring each other. And so will our facial expressions. And this leads to something really fascinating. In, uh, in Daniel Goleman's book, uh, Social Intelligence, he talks about this, where, you know, like, <laughs> you know, if, if you notice, you know, couples who have been around each other for a long time, 
there's a certain resemblance, especially around the eyes. You can notice that there's like a, gosh, you know, like if you mass out the eyes, it's like, wow, you look really alike. It's weird. <laughs> there's a reason for that. Because the whole time, 20, 30 years that we're together, we're communicating and we're literally, um, we're, we're literally shaping our faces to mimic each other. And as we shape our faces over and over, the, the, the shape of our face changes. And so this is, this is absolutely something that's been happening forever. It's part of our evolution. It's like getting back to nature, right? This is how we decide. Because honestly, what happens is the reason why we, um, this is really interesting, the reason why we mimic each other's facial, um, uh, you know, expressions is because if I can make your, if I can make my face like your face, you know, in terms of the shape, the expression, then I understand what you're feeling. And that's empathy, right? And empathy comes in, and, and this is a beautiful segue. I'm so excited for this. I got to check the time, though. I don't know how much time I have left here. Um, but speaking of empathy, what I wanted to talk to you, it's actually perfect. What I wanted to talk to you about today is is something really beautiful. And so so empathy has several forms, right? Um, one one way of, of talking about empathy is, you know, um, express in the beautiful term, your pain in my heart, right? Which is truly where I feel which is part of the facial expressions, right? I feel you, your feelings inside me, right? That's what, that's one form of empathy, right? Another form of empathy is, um, is uh, uh, perspective taking, right? Putting yourself in another person's shoes, right? There's a couple others that aren't coming to mind right now, and I'll have to get back to you on those. But the third one is the one that I'm, in, the, the next one rather, is the one that I'm really, that's important, right? <clears throat> which is empathic joy, Right. And so I was um, reading, I, you know, I'm doing a, another workshop on Saturday morning. Uh, pardon me. And this one is on loving kindness. Right. And because, again, the loving kindness that I talk about today. Right. That that, you know, again, loving kindness is is that aspect of or I'm sorry, not that aspect, but but the the concept that even though I'm legitimately and justifiably disappointed in something that somebody did, I can still lead with kindness. Like the Dalai Lama says, <laughs> whenever possible, be kind. It is always possible, right? And so I, I wanted to pick up this book, uh, Sharon Salzberg, uh, Loving Kindness, The Revolutionary Art of Happiness. Um, I've not read this one before. I've read a bunch of Sharon Salzberg's works before, and I love her. Um, <clears throat> she's very much Buddhist. You know, not, I'm not Buddhist, as you know, uh, but, you know, I don't practice Buddhism. But, but when I read books written about Buddhism, I'm like, well that's what I'm doing, <laughs> you know, like that's, that you're describing my life here, you know, so, so I believe that I have the heart of a Buddha, right, but even though I don't practice Buddhism per se, not in the, you know, sort of uh, ritualistic sense the, with all the different terms and the, you know, the four noble truths and the eightfold path and all that kind of stuff, I'm, I'm aware of a lot of it, but I'm not practicing it, but I am practicing it, right, without practicing it, very confusing, but anyway, on page number one of Sharon's book, okay, she has a term. She, she's talking about these four principles that are part of some, you know, a Buddhist uh, notion of, of the four principles being love, compassion, um, <clears throat> um, uh, equanimity, and this other one. And I don't know if they're supposed to be in order because they're not. I'm, I'm naming the third one fourth because I'm saving it for last. Sympathetic joy. Whew. Man, when I read that phrase last night, sympathetic joy, it literally, it froze me in my, I, I just, I felt paralyzed with the warmth of like, like, like ecstatic paralysis. Like I was so excited. I was frozen. And I want to talk about that for a few minutes. Can we? So sympathetic joy, let's talk about that. Now, again, empathic joy, it's basically the same thing, right? It's, it's well, see, the thing is sympathy and empathy are, are really synonymous. They, they really are. If you look up in the dictionary, they, they refer to each other, you know, empathy, you know, the definition for empathy says, 
you know, sympathetic, you know, the, the definition for sympathy says empathic, right? So it's, it's, they're right there with each other. But I think that the connotation though, I think like when we say sympathy, I think when we say empathy, it's that we feel you, right? Like we understand. But I think when we say empathy, it's like we're leaning a little bit more into the compassion, right? Where not only do we know, but we also care, right? And so when we talk about sympathetic joy, right, which is essentially feeling the joy of another, right? I mean, think about that. It's like the opposite side, the, the you know, the reverse of, of um, or the converse of, um, of compassion, right? Compassion is something that we, we engage in in the face of suffering, right? When we notice somebody's suffering, that's when we give them compassion. But when we notice somebody's joy, we don't always give our sympathetic joy. We don't always in, you know, you know, stand with that joy. A lot of times we ridicule that joy. A lot of times we do something to knock that joy right off their face. <laughs> I'm on TikTok a lot. You know, I try not to watch too much because you can get sucked into that, that app really quick. Um, it's like Facebook on steroids. You know, I notice it's like the one social media app on my phone, which blocks out the clock. I can't see the time when I'm on TikTok. I can on Instagram. I can on Facebook. I can on LinkedIn. I can on YouTube, <laughs> but not TikTok. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, <clears throat> you go on TikTok and there's a lot of people out there who are, you know, they the people use TikTok for for business for sure, but, but a lot of people use it just to express themselves. You know, they just want to put themselves out there, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. Pardon me, get a little, uh, probably from the, the ice rink, I got a little dry throat here. Um, but, uh, um, but what you see on there so much, and it's really, it is really quite tragic that, you know, you see these people like people doing, um, what do they call it? Cosplaying. I always want to say cosplaying, but I think it's cosplaying, like where they, you know, dress up as like anime characters and stuff like that. You know, <laughs> I have no idea what any of the references are when I see these things, but you can tell that people are putting a lot into it and they're, and they're enjoying themselves. You know, this is something that brings them joy, right? And, and this is where social media, if you, if you approach social media with the awareness of what it really is and the sort of you know, disidentification that allows you a sort of objective third person sort of detachment, you can learn a lot about people <laughs> and about human nature, you know, and, and what I see on things like this are, you know, like people will berate these kids, you know, kids or adults, whoever, right? Like, like, oh, you're so weird or, or, you know, why don't you go to the dentist or, or, you know, you really could lose weight or, you know, like, like, like when you see somebody having fun, don't don't take away their shine. That's no good. Because again, it goes right back to what I was talking about with Stephanie and me at the ice rink. <laughs> Ironically named the Edge Ice Rink. <laughs> So while I'm out there with my edges just sliding across the ice with nothing, <laughs> I'm reading the edge all over the place. I'm like, oh, gosh, this is like Kafka-esque. <laughs> but it's exactly what I mean by that, right? So when you see somebody doing something weird, and and honestly, this is where we can practice, right? We can, we can intentionally. We can intentionally practice and cultivate this sympathetic joy. We can look for opportunities. We can look for people doing things that looks like they're having fun. It looks like it's bringing them joy. And then have sympathy for that thing that they're doing, right? Sympathy, if you want to call it empathy, because sympathy feels like something should be wrong, right? But it's not. It's it's not sympathetic, just like your sympathetic nervous system, right? It's just a, it's a response. Like I'm responding to you, to what's going on. So let me respond to your joy with joy. Let me stand with your joy and celebrate you and cheer you on and enjoy your joy. 
Like, let me experience your joy and feel it. Because again, as I was saying about my, my video cut off, I'm sure you realize that by now. <laughs> but as I was saying before, it's just like me and Stephanie, that, that when I do this, when I look for what's making you happy and then try to understand you and that thing that's making you happy, do you feel it yet? When we do that, we're connecting with each other. We're, we're breaking down this, this delusion of separateness and we're, we're really getting together. And again, it's serving us. It's bringing us health and well-being as well as happiness. So I invite you to do this, to like look for the opportunities. And, and, and also now this is again where this is where kindness is mindfulness. There's no difference between, it's just like a different sort of expression of it, right? But, but, but what happens is as you're looking for these opportunities, what you're also going to notice is why do I want to say this person's, why do I want to say they're weird and, 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 and lash out at them? Why do I feel like I want to knock them down? What's inside me that's making me feel that way? Because I'll tell you what, it's got nothing to do with the guy in the wig. <laughs> That's not what's upsetting you. You might be jealous of the guy in the wig. You might be envious. You might be, you know, resentful that you didn't get to do that. That might be making you angry. And this is what is going to come out of the kindness practice. Because as you practice being kindness, you'll notice where it takes more effort. And in those moments, you're going to notice like, oh, wow, I just learned something about myself. And little bit by little bit by little bit, you learn more and more and more. And then you get to the point where, you know, you're, you're living as, as the Buddha says in, in uh, Sharon's wonderful book, she refers to, you're living a skilled life. You're, I think that's the, not skilled, but skillful. Like, like, you know, like the Buddha says, you know, lose all the unskillfulness in your life, which is essentially saying, you know, don't be unintentional and be kind and be aware. All right, folks. So this Saturday, 1130 a.m., uh, mountain time, which is 1030 Pacific time, uh, 1230 central and 130 PM on the East coast. We're doing another workshop. Okay. This is number four in our 12 week workshop, but they are standalone. You do not have to have, you know, done one and not the other. You can just come to this one and never another one. This one's going to be awesome. Okay. It's all about this. It's all about loving kindness. And we're going to talk about it. And we're going to talk about what it is, how to cultivate it, what happens when we cultivate it. I'm going to talk about the vagus nerve. We're going to talk about all this beautiful stuff. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be great. And of course, I'll give you some practices. So I uh, hope you can make it. Uh, I'm going to put a link in the description. Um, the link in the description could be to the main page because I haven't done the page for the uh, the loving kindness yet. That's going to happen today. So I'll send that page to you tomorrow. But the registration is the same thing. So just click the link in this page and you'll register for the Zoom. And it's free. I, I will accept a $15 donation if you if you want to offer one. Um, as I like to say, uh, donations are always appreciated, but never expected. All right, everybody. I wish you well. And I'll, uh, I'll be back again, um, yeah, hopefully tomorrow. All right? Have a great day, everybody. I wish you well.